I would like to welcome the third speaker, which is Paul Fakas from Komodo Health. He will speak about local and regional U.S. epidemiology of cholangiocarcinoma. Uh, Paul Fakas is a member of the customer team of Komodo Health, a living healthcare a company. Paul is a technologist who has spent the majority of his career in healthcare, working for life sciences companies, including Abbott Laboratories and Abbey. Thank you. All right, hi everyone, my name is Paul Zakis and here to represent Komodo Health. Um, so today I'll be talking about a little bit about our partnership uh, with the Cholangiocarcinoma Foundation, um, as well as a kind of disease landscape analysis that we did um, based on our industry leading healthcare data map that I'll talk about. But first of all, what is Komodo Health? So Komodo Health is a technology company founded in San Francisco in 2014. Uh, we've also got a New York City office. Um, I am actually a remote employee uh, based out of Chicago and barely made it here uh, due to the cold temperatures there. Uh, flight was delayed, but thankfully I'm here. Uh, we've got about 100 plus team members working on this and um, at the company and about 60% of those 100 are data engineers. So really we're focused on technology and data um, and really trying to extract insights um, based, on, based on our data. So our mission as a company, to reduce the global burden of disease through the most actionable healthcare map. So two key concepts there. Reducing the global burden of disease. We're interested in partnering with life sciences companies as well as patient advocacy organizations like the foundation to, um, to help guide their efforts through data and to really kind of arm them with the information that will help them be more effective in addressing disease burden out there in the world. As well as through the most actionable healthcare map. So that's our industry leading uh, data map which we've, we've been heavily investing in over the last four years. And you can see some key stats uh, there at the bottom. So our data is based on patient level data, uh, which you may hear commonly referred to as claims. Um, but that patient level encounters data, we've, we've amassed um, approximately 300 million patients. So we have some level of data across uh, 300 million US patients. And about half of that, that 300 million, we've got full payer complete data set meaning that we can tra uh, track a patient's journey um, through the different encounters throughout the healthcare, their healthcare journey. Uh, whether they see specialists, generalists, they're in the hospital or a, or a specialty clinic, we can, we can see that whole journey. And really what we've been trying to build is the ground truth of healthcare. Healthcare in the United States is a disparate uh, you know, system of, of many payers, uh, public and private payers as well. And really by pulling this data together into one unified healthcare map, uh, we're hoping to build that ground truth. So we currently work with over 20 leading life sciences companies, uh, small and large biotechs as well. Um, and we've obtained the QE, you see the little QE ribbon there. That's the qualified entity designation from, from CMS. And really what that gives us is a, kind of a certification that um, you know, we, take, uh, we take patient privacy very seriously. And we've been kind of audited fully by CMS to, to ensure our data handling practices are secure and that we're, uh, we're handling data appropriately. Um, it also gives us access to the full range of Medicare data um, that CMS has kind of exclusively made available to um, QB partners, which opens a lot of doors for seeing the full journey of patients um, on Medicare. Um, so in May 2018, we were, we were fortunate to partner with Stacy and the foundation team. Um, so really partnering with, uh, with Calangio Carcinoma Foundation, the, the leader um, in this area. Um, and then empowering them with our, our kind of um, large healthcare map to help guide, uh, guide the tactics of, um, the, and strategies of the foundation. So I'll talk about those uh, real quick, quickly. Um, and unfortunately, I was unable to make it on time yesterday. I think Stacy went through some of this yesterday. Um, so I'll try to I'll make this quick. Um, so really, how is our healthcare map um, helping patients? Well, we've we provided the CCF team with, um, with the healthcare map to understand the landscape of cholangiocarcinoma. So they can look at a national level, who are the key providers and how many patients are they treating on average? Uh, what are the key clinics out there seeing the most patients in a given region? Those type of questions can easily be answered when you aggregate data to this level. Uh, we've also mapped both academic and community practitioners across the US, really to help drive improvements in the standard of care. So, um, 
we've, uh, we've worked with the CCF team on the Mutations Matter campaign and really arm them with uh, a list of HCPs to help, um, to help target those who may benefit from increased education about genetic tumor testing and, and other key information to help, again, raise the standard of care. Uh, we produced the um, uh, specialist finder map, so that's a list of 700 cholangiocarcinoma specialists as, uh, as found in our data. So really we combine clinical, scientific, and industry experience into that, into that list to ensure that patients can find an expert kind of in their local area readily. And then lastly, working with the foundation team to help uh, find new leaders. You know, who, are, who are the key treaters out there that, uh, that should be brought into this effort and, and be brought to meetings like this? Um, into organizations like the ICRN to, uh, to help uh, increase research in this, in this needed area. So now I'll get to a few of the kind of findings from our healthcare map. I've got three slides on this. And what we've done is really taken a, a landscape analysis based on that kind of healthcare map that I described. Um, so we took the four diagnosis codes, and I think Dr. Patel's presentation was excellent in that um, we've, uh, we've incorporated some of these codes, but um, you know, the data that we're working with, again, is really based on coding and billing. And we're, we're somewhat um, dependent on accurate coding and billing to, to ensure that we're able to do this type of analysis. Um, so our first finding in the top right, we found that two out of three CCA patients have been treated in academic medical centers. So really that just speaks to the concentration of treatment in those large centers, as opposed to maybe another disease like a lung cancer where, where treatment's more, more common in the community. Um, that doesn't mean that patients originated there in the, in the academic centers. They may have been referred into an academic center, um, but, uh, but we found that two out of three had, had some level of treatment there. Now, patients with new CCA diagnosis in the bottom left, this is kind of a year-by-year -year, uh, count of just um, patients in which we've seen activity and, and, and medical encounters based on one of those matching diagnosis codes at the top. Um, you see somewhat of a... a, 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 a plateau around 10,000 or 11,000 new kind of cases per year. Um, we think that little spike between 15 and 16 may have something to do with the ICD-9 to ICD-10 coding transition um, as the disease is coded more accurately out there. Um, but still a little bit more work to do to find you know, what's driving that, that number. In addition, as our healthcare data map grows, um, we're able to pull in a more rich patient history in the past. So the way we got these counts is finding the first occurrence of a patient encounter stamped with one of those CCA diagnoses. Now, if a patient had um, been at another clinic and we didn't have data coverage from that source, um, we may have thought it was the first, but it may have been a, a repeat diagnosis or, uh, or another step in the treatment journey for that patient. Um, and then average age at diagnosis, again, this was really a, just a, on the whole data set. Um, what are the, what's the average age that we're seeing um, at the whole patient population? So roughly uh, 74 years of age is, is what we had found for the um, full set of patients in the data set. Now, um, I think future research, and Stacy and I have talked about this, to uh, break down by age group and, see, um, and try to see if we observe some of the trends um, that we saw in the prior presentation about um, um, incidents by age. The next two slides are a couple of different maps that we pulled together. So CCA treatment hotspots. So what we did was took our healthcare map and looked at the sites of care at which patients were being treated, and then lined that up with uh, the US county by county map. And you can see really this just indicates uh, treatment hotspots in large metro areas. If you look, um, look closely, you'll see uh, you know, the East Coast, you see Chicago in the Midwest, Florida, Southern California, um, all, the, all the big metro areas. and um, uh, which would be treating the largest, center, uh, largest amount of patients as the key cancer centers are located there. Um, so that just speaks to the concentration of patients in those, in those different locations. Now this one, we, we, took those, we took the same counts and we actually normalized by population as, as just to see if, if any particular areas were, were um, kind of seeing a disproportionate number of patients. And, and what we did was, um, again, took that, took that same number, patients uh, being treated in the different county locations, and just normalized it. And the darker locations are where, um, where more patients are being treated relative to the local population. Um, so again, a lot more work to be done to, to see what's driving this trend. 
um, and to kind of validate the assumptions that we made while, while doing this. Um, this is not to the level of publishable research yet, but um, it does, does speak to um, some of the potential that we can, we can put forward to the community um, with this large healthcare map, uh, data map that we've amassed. Um, so to end, opportunities for collaboration. Um, so our first kind of collaboration that, uh, that we've been working with kind of through the Kalenji Carcinoma Foundation is with Dr. Coy at uh, MD Anderson. And Dr. Coy came to us, um, I believe last May, and, and said, I'd like to test a hypothesis um, whether or not a few key papers in the area of radiation therapy have um, changed the standard of care across the country. You know, have these influenced providers um, working in the radiation field um, in, in terms of their practice behavior? And can we look at this kind of wide sweeping um, healthcare map that Komodo Health has put together uh, to validate that? So you can see kind of a patient funnel slide on the left where uh, we kind of define our patient cohorts. And we'll be starting that, that analysis soon to identify um, if those papers have indeed, uh, we see a real world effect from them. Um, so more research to come. Uh, we are certainly open to additional opportunities to work with folks in this room. Um, so please come up afterwards and, um, and we can certainly speak about, about other opportunities. Um, one final, final slide here, um, uncovering insights in CCA. So linking patient registries to the data map. So this is an idea kind of we, had, we had talked about internally. And um, again, still, still requires more discussion here, but we assign every uh, patient in our data set with a unique patient key. And we strip out all identifying fields like name, home address, and, and any other indicators that, that may um, be a risk of re-identification. What we can do is apply the same process there to uh, patient registry information or, or medical records and really enrich that data set with our kind of our healthcare map and really provide a full context. You know, what are the different patient encounters uh, that have happened along a patient's journey um, in terms of treatment, in terms of diagnosis, um, would help identify comorbidities, um, really the patient history uh, of, of where they've um, kind of manifested in the healthcare system. Um, so that's another possibility as well that we're excited to explore going forward. Um, all with the goal of a deeper understanding of carcinoma as a disease and really helping to improve the standard of care uh, through data. Um, so thank you very much for your time. Um, uh, it says questions, but we'll, we'll save it for the panel. <laughs> thank you.